Ah, uh, another day fat free. Nice. Masturbation healthy? Ha! I feel better than ever. What the heck was that? What the? We lay Noah Church to rest, knowing that though Noah was taken from us too young, yet he did not die for nothing, and we can learn much from his passing. Remember, masturbate vigorously and often, or you too will explode. But seriously, I get these kinds of questions quite often. Is it really healthy to just not Masturbate? 90 days, man! Are you crazy? That can't be healthy! Here's one such comment. Please, Noah, tell me that. Is there any link between no fat, blue balls, and testicular cancer? Quintuple question mark. And another one. You flatline because you don't use it. He meant to say don't. If you don't use it, you lose it. You need to have at least 21 ejaculations a month to prevent prostate cancer. Wow, that's quite specific. Uh, most of the alarm raisers on this issue tend to cite this one study that showed that frequent ejaculation when young tended to provide a protective property against prostate cancer later in life. It's called ejaculation frequency and subsequent risk of prostate cancer. And indeed, they found that when compared to the guys who ejaculated four to seven times per month, the guys who ejaculated 21 times or more per month had a slightly decreased risk of prostate cancer later in life. The relative risk was 0.89, which means that they had about 11% decrease in that risk. But what this study does not do is differentiate between the types of ejaculations that it's looking at. These ejaculations include masturbation, uh, partnered sex, penile, vaginal sex, um, anal sex, oral sex, any type of sex that results in an ejaculation, and nocturnal emissions or wet dreams, as they're often known. So we can't see it in this study whether or not we can masturbate to those 21 ejaculations per month and it will provide the same effect. In fact, other studies that did differentiate between the types of ejaculations have found that masturbation itself does not provide this same protective, potentially protective effect, and in fact can even increase risk of prostate cancer as well as other physical and mental health concerns. Now, even this study, if we look at the conclusion, found that our results suggest that ejaculation frequency is not related to increased risk of prostate cancer. So even if we just had this study, this is not enough, not conclusive enough, to show that ejaculation frequency has anything to do with prostate cancer. And indeed, if we look at other research, we find that there's not much out there that demonstrates that this is indeed the case. One of the major failings of this study is that it failed to differentiate between the types of ejaculations it was looking at. It includes a masturbation, copulatory orgasms with penile vaginal sex, uh, anal sex, oral sex, nocturnal emissions, or wet dreams as they're commonly known. And it doesn't differentiate between any of these or recognize that perhaps some of these methods of reaching ejaculation might have a protective effect and some might not or even have a damaging effect. When we look at the other studies out there that do differentiate between types of ejaculation, we find that masturbation is not associated with a protective effect and in fact is often associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer. The findings were surprising. Sexual intercourse did not affect prostate cancer risk, but frequent masturbation did, in different ways at different times of life. Frequent masturbation during men's 20s and 30s increased their risk of prostate cancer, but men in their 50s who masturbated frequently had decreased risk. Just how much increased risk did those younger guys face? Well, for men in their 20s, frequent masturbation two to seven times a week compared to same-age guys who reported masturbating less than once per month, 
these 20-something frequent masturbators had a 79% higher risk of prostate cancer by age 60. For men in their 50s, frequent masturbation is not 4 to 7 times per week, they classified it as 1 or more times per week. And compared to the men this age, who did not masturbate at all, these guys had a decreased risk of prostate cancer. Does this mean that masturbation was protecting them from prostate cancer? Not necessarily. Uh, there are several other possibilities, including the most salient, which is that these guys who still masturbate one or more times per week are probably healthier in other ways than the guys who don't. They have better diets, better physical fitness, and they still have that libido that's impelling them toward masturbation. Whereas the guys who don't masturbate at all, it's probably not because they have chosen not to, because they are fabstronauts. It's probably because they no longer have the health and libido necessary to masturbate or a strong enough libido that it impels them to masturbate frequently. Frequently. So if you're actually concerned about reducing your risks for cancer, including prostate cancer, there are probably some other lifestyle changes that you could make that would have a far more reliable protective effect than continuing to masturbate. Let's take a look at Beyond Meatless, the health effects of vegan diets findings from the Adventist cohorts. According to this study, people on a plant-based diet had a 35% reduced risk for prostate cancer and reduced risk for virtually all cancers as well as hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease, all things that you should probably avoid. But prostate cancer isn't the only health effect that's been studied in relation to sexual intercourse and masturbation. The relative health benefits of different sexual activities. And this is a review of other studies that took a look at health measures such as psychological wellness, happiness, sexual satisfaction, marital satisfaction, depression, anxiety, etc. The purpose of this review was to sort out different sexual activities and try to figure out which ones provide benefits and which benefits, which ones are neutral, and which ones may be detrimental. Let's take a look at the results. A wide range of better psychological and physiological health indices are associated specifically with penile vaginal intercourse. Other sexual activities have weaker, no, or in the cases of masturbation and anal intercourse, inverse associations with health indices. Condom use appears to impair some benefits of penile vaginal intercourse. Still, use condoms. Unless you're in a committed, exclusive relationship, use condoms. Now you should take a look at this whole study, all the studies I'm talking about I will link to in the description below, but here are a couple of highlights. Concerning depression, higher masturbation frequency and even the desire for more masturbation is associated with depression, and masturbation is associated with less happiness. The association of masturbation with depression is unlikely to be a result of simply a lack of penile vaginal intercourse, because more masturbation and less PVI make independent contributions to less satisfaction with relationships, sex life, life in general, and one's mental health. Now consistently, what Stuart Brody, the author of this review, found was that the penile vaginal intercourse had, tends to be good for people's sense of wellness, their happiness, their satisfaction in their marriage, and their sex life, whereas other types of sex, including oral sex and anal sex, were either neutral or sometimes negative but masturbation especially was negatively correlated with a lot of these health measures. And they're not even looking at porn addiction, PMO addicts. They're just measuring masturbation in general. Here's another interesting one, and it's a physical health effect. Prostatodynia, pronunciation not guaranteed. Prostatodynia is characterized by urinary symptoms and pelvic pain suggestive of prostatitis, but with a non-pathological prostate examination and without signs of inflammation or infection in prostatic, prostatatic, prostat, prostatic secretions. In a report on prostatodynia in the United Nations Peacekeeping Forces, the occurrence of the disorder was associated with not having penile vaginal intercourse, and it resolved with recommencement of PVI. However, masturbation led to either no improvement or to an exacerbation of pain symptoms. So if you're experiencing pelvic pain or pain during urination, symptoms of prostatodynia, then 
might be alleviated by having more penile vaginal intercourse in your life, but masturbation will probably not help and may even exacerbate the symptoms. Given that condom use can reduce some of these benefits of PVI, penile vaginal intercourse, we can probably conclude that the exchange of bodily fluids is at least partly responsible for some of these emotional benefits that we see from PVI. Now, masturbation, of course, is not going to provide these emotional benefits, but even the endogenous chemicals produced in our own bodies are different between masturbation and sex. Let's take a look at another study here. The post-orgasmic prolactin increase following intercourse is greater than following masturbation and suggests greater satiety or satisfaction. Now, prolactin is partially responsible for down-regulating libido and providing a feeling of satisfaction after orgasm. And prolactin is increased at four times the amount during actual sex intercourse with a partner versus with masturbation. So we get far greater feelings of satisfaction and probably those emotional benefits from actual intercourse than we do with masturbation. And I can look back in my life and definitely see that this is the case after having sex. I feel happy and satisfied after masturbating. Not all the time, but certainly after masturbating to porn, I just felt like I wanted to watch more porn. Like I wasn't satisfied and I could never fill myself up with enough pornography or masturbation to be satisfied. Maybe that's just me. I don't think so though. There are a lot of pseudoscience articles on the internet about how healthy masturbation is, lists like uh, 10 reasons why you should masturbate more often, or 5 ways masturbation is making you a healthier person, or 8 reasons to masturbate more often, things like this. But it's important to actually look at the research and see, is masturbation linked to greater satisfaction, greater physical health, greater anything in life, or is it linked to more negative outcomes? Now, I am not saying that everyone should stop masturbating, or that you should never masturbate, or that if you have masturbated in the past, then you're doomed to be unhealthy and unsatisfied forever. That's certainly not what I'm saying. I think that masturbation can be a semi-regular or regular part of somebody's life, and they can still have wonderful relationships and a satisfying life, a great career, all that. I'm not saying that everyone should go fat-free, or that it would be the best for everybody. But what I am saying is that if you're out there considering going fat-free for a period of time, or for the rest of your life even, you shouldn't be worried about it causing detrimental health effects. Because the evidence for that is shaky at best, and there's actually more evidence for positive health effects associated with ceasing masturbation. The most severe health effect you're likely to encounter on your journey away from masturbation is epididymal hypertension, or blue balls as it's more commonly called. The epididymis is a tube-like duct attached to each testicle that helps to transfer sperm from the testicles to the urethra. And when we have blue balls, this area gets inflamed and it hurts, it's, it might ache, it might last for several hours, and it's just generally uncomfortable. So why does this happen? Well, when we get erections, our arteries dilate to allow more blood flow into the penis, our veins constrict just to make sure that that blood doesn't flow right back out again, and once we reach orgasm, the body naturally drains the excess blood out of the genitals, and things return to normal. Blue balls happens when we have an erection, but we don't reach orgasm. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes if sex gets interrupted, or if you're trying to quit masturbation, but maybe you edged for a while, or you're just experiencing more random erections throughout the day and not having any release, and your body is not used to that, you might experience epididymal hypertension or blue balls. Now, it's called blue balls because this blood is not being reoxygenated by the lungs. This blood is just staying in the penis and in that genital area, and it will turn blue after a time because it's deoxygenated and that can actually visibly change the color of the testicles and the ball sack. Scrotum, I think that's the better word for it. Blue balls are not a serious health concern. It can cause pain and discomfort for several hours, but it won't cause any serious damage or permanent lasting effects. 
A lot of guys find success with cold packs, cold water, cold showers, just to soothe that area and reduce inflammation. But really, time is going to solve it more than anything. Just give it some time. There's one other concept I want to talk about and address here, and that is the idea that if you don't use it, you'll lose it. I don't really know where this idea comes from. I haven't found any research or evidence to support this concept, but some people still believe it, and you shouldn't. It's like saying that your capacity to feel hunger will disappear if you stop eating. Our sex drive, our libido, is an innate appetite within us, and it's not going to go away because we don't indulge it for a while. In fact, it's my experience that it increases when you don't indulge it for a while, and increases again when you indulge for the first time after a long time, being away from sex and ejaculation. We call that the chaser effect, and I see the same, I've experienced the same thing in eating. You know, if I fast for a while, for a few days, then I'll lose that constant feeling of hunger, but once I start eating again, that hunger, that appetite will come rushing back. And I see that it's the same thing with sex. So your sex drive might be reduced for a short time as you're abstaining and being abstinent from masturbation and intercourse, but as soon as you start engaging with that sexuality again, that's going to come back and it will not disappear permanently. So please don't worry about that. So that was today's video. I hope it put some of your minds at ease. If you'd like to get my personal guidance, you can find paid ways to do so at my website. And if you've been with me since the last video or you're on my email newsletter, you know that I've started a Patreon page, which is a way for me to connect better with all of you and get some financial support for these videos so I can continue to make them more and more frequently into a higher standard of quality. Let's, let's look at that Patreon page and see how much support I've got. Three dollars. Yes! I got three dollars, three dollars, it's my birthday. <laughs> but seriously, thank you to my first three supporters. I'm actually offering a giveaway starting now for the first 15 people who support me on Patreon at any level, even one dollar a month. I'm going to offer a free complimentary email coaching session. That means you get to email me with your situation, your story, your questions, and I'll email you back with my opinion on your situation and my guidance. I'm gonna put all the information about that in the description below. So be one of those first 15 and email me at noah at addicted to internet porn.com from the email address associated with your Patreon. And once we reach $30 a month, I'm going to start my monthly live stream so that Everyone that's supporting me on Patreon at the $1 a month level or above can come in and chat with me live. Uh, you'll be typing and you'll be seeing my face and I'll be answering your questions live for 45 minutes or so. And then a week later or so I'll release that video on YouTube. But for my Patreon supporters, they're the only ones who will be there to ask questions and see it live. So I hope to see you all there. And until then, have a wonderful PMO-free day and I'll see you all next time.